They are the first criminal charges alleging foreign meddling in next month's midterm elections. The U.S. Justice Department today disclosed the complaint against a Russian citizen. A woman there is accused of managing finances for a social media campaign to spread distrust about American policy debates and candidates. For more details on our top story, let's turn to Nina Jankowitz of the Wilson Center. It is a nonpartisan think tank here in Washington. Nina Jankowitz, welcome back to the program. So we We've heard again and again the Russians interfered, succeeded in interfering in 2016. They're still at it. What's new in this complaint? Well, I think what's new is that we have hard evidence now that they're interfering on all, all sides of the issue, all sides of the political spectrum. And I think that's really important for Americans to know going into the elections in two weeks, that this is not a partisan issue. It's an issue about attacking our democracy. And clearly, the Justice Department wanted to put that out there before we go to the polls. Because in a way, this can be confusing. I mean, it would be, we were told in 2016 what the Russians were up to and and the people who've been uh, indicted so far by the special counsel Robert Mueller have been people who seem to be working on behalf of President Trump but this this has people as you say on all sides of some of these issues. yeah exactly we've seen pro uh, Robert Mueller tweets and anti Robert Mueller tweets we have seen uh, things that say voter fraud is a felony we have also seen uh, organization of rallies that uh, the Russians have supported where resistance folks would turn out in front of the White House for a flash mob on July 4th. So these are on all sides of the political spectrum, and this is exactly the tactic that Russia has used time and time again, not only here in the United States, but across Eastern Europe. And I want to look, I mean, just as an example, and I think we have a, a graphic of this, the voter fraud. This was a tweet about voter fraud. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a felony. Hold them accountable. Fight, fight, fight. And then real Donald Trump, POTUS. Now, that is uh, an argument one does hear from Republicans. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, absolutely. But it's, again, this uh, desire to sow chaos and dismay is, is a, a time tried and true Russian tactic. Um, and the idea there is just to turn us inward, to get us to fight amongst each other so that we're less focused on what Russia is doing on the international stage. There's also interesting information in here, Nina Jankowitz, about the, about the financing of this. This woman appears to be an accountant yes. in Russia. It doesn't appear they'll ever be able to extradite her to the United States mm -hmm. to face these charges. Mm -hmm. Right. It's, it's extremely interesting to know that over three years they've spent at least $35 million on advertising, on domains and proxies, on, uh, on the payment of actual activists, again, which is, is a staggering uh, statistic. And if you look at what, for instance, the Global Engagement Center, the center that's uh, created to fight disinformation at the State Department, they had a budget of $60 million for a single year that was hard for the State Department to even get their hands on. And that was for countering state propaganda worldwide. Um, this was directed toward the United States, the EU, Ukraine, and interestingly, also within the Russian Federation. And as you mentioned, you, you mentioned that flash mob. Mm -hmm. People actually showed up for that. Absolutely. Right? And, and this isn't the first time we've seen activists show up to Russian organized or supported events like this. But I think it's important to know that this is, this is not just an abstract social media campaign. This is changing people's behavior and the discourse surrounding the election. And you were telling me uh, what you noted here is how much it says that the special counsel and his office now know about this. Absolutely. This yeah, yeah. It's a staggering level of detail. Uh, I don't know what that means for the future, but I think it, it, it's an important issue for our, our democracy heading into the midterms. Uh, it's not a partisan issue, and I would hope that politicians on, on all sides of the aisle uh, begin to understand that and advocate for solutions that are nonpartisan to it as well. Nina Jankowitz with the Wilson Center. We thank you. Thanks for having me.